this show went from good to great to phenomenal, and all the while it was a wildly entertaining ride. Welcome to Sandwich Reviews. I'm the Talking Sentient Sandwich, and I always knew it was going to play off of the commercial idea of Halloween and witches, but I love every time it is made clear just how distorted people's image of Halloween is, or how common everyday objects can fit the description of a witch's recipe item. Also, before I get too much further, if my voice sounds a little more annoying and crackly than usual, Agatha cursed me, so I'm a little sick. What can I say? At least I'm not dead, I guess. But getting back to Agatha, I heard the show's title was going through all the different names to eventually get to Agatha all along, and I was like, oh, I don't buy it. But that doesn't even matter, because whatever title the show has doesn't take away from the fact that it's incredible. I mean, the best action is probably in the first episode, which to be clear is fine, because this show was never about the action. I was a little disappointed in the specific witchy action later on, which would have soured my review as a whole, yet the show managed to make up for that with interesting character work and narrative reveals. Along with that, the pacing is a masterclass at holding the audience's attention, speeding up every episode in this chaotically flamboyant way, only ever slowing down for necessary character moments, and you still knew that before long, it'd get back to the crazy stuff. There are some conveniences in the plot here and there as well, but nothing too egregious. And unlike some of the other Marvel season finales, this made the whole thing more than worth it. Towards the end, I began to wonder how it could possibly wrap up everything in a satisfying way, but have no fear, it is all perfect. My favorite aspect, hands down, would be the recurring theme song that managed to get stuck in my head for weeks, and the way that Witch's Road song would come back in a different rendition with every reoccurrence made it that much more impactful, somehow even getting emotional resonance on two separate occasions. But another element I gotta bring up is just how good the production design is. What got me to make a note about it in the first place is Teen's room, filled to the brim with iconic movie posters and objects. His room was just a great monument to theater kid energy in the best way possible. And aside from incredibly detailed and crafted physical sets, which some are better than others, though aside from one particular shot I'll talk about later in spoilers, nothing took me out but practical effects are also included whenever they could be. It's the reason I wasn't the biggest fan of the purple-powered hand-waving, or orange, or green, or whatever color they were using. None of it was noticeably bad, but it wasn't nearly as good as when they just used tangible props and camera moves to enhance the witchy stuff, rather than CG. I should also take this time to mention how tired I am of Funko Pops and toy lines in general revealing a character before the show can reveal it. Come on guys, it shouldn't be hard to not ruin it for the fans. Leaks happen, but this is worse than that. But anyway, if you're one of the rare few who skipped out and still haven't seen it, you kinda missed your chance to watch it during the spooky season like it was clearly meant to be watched, but make sure you check out Agatha all along, because it's heartfelt and a vibrantly good time. But now, it's time to dive into the many, many spoilers in this show, so make sure you've seen the whole thing before continuing, especially for the two-part finale. But before we get there, let's talk about the trials. Because in my review for the premiere, I mentioned how those trials could make for a great season-long arc. But I wasn't sure if the show could maintain the same level of excitement. But I want to apologize for just how wrong I was. There is so much more to be revealed, but at the heart of this show is a coven of witches going down the witch's road. I still don't think that narrative crux would work for any other story, Marvel or not, but the way the writers use that simple premise to springboard the rest of the complicated plot off of should be studied. I mean, if I was going to nitpick one thing, I did notice the aspect ratio in episode 5 didn't change for the trial, which doesn't matter, but the episodes prior did that and it threw me off when they didn't follow through with a pattern. But maybe there was some thematic reasoning I'm not seeing. Additionally, for the first time in Marvel history, in the back of my mind, I actually believed we were going to see Mephisto. I mean, I knew we wouldn't, but he was name dropped and there was always a chance. But moving on to the last four episodes, which are easily the best if we're not counting Alice's episode, I want to quickly mention Lilia, because everything with her was phenomenal. Sadly, it didn't hit me as hard, because it's the same thing as Hannah Gross's episode in The Haunting of Bly Manor, and the emotional impact was more devastating there, but I don't want to take away from the masterful writing that this episode of Agatha all along displayed. 
On the opposite side of masterful writing, I thought it was awfully convenient and honestly out of nowhere that Agatha was the one that bound Jen. I figured we'd get more of that one creepy guy, but I suppose that was just Jen latching onto any reason as to why this terrible thing happened to her. Hope we see more of her in the future though. But of course, Wiccan coming out in full costume was spectacular, and I knew that Joe Locke was a great casting choice for the character before that, but that was the moment that cemented him as the perfect Wiccan. And before he teams up with Agatha, they held on the shot of Agatha draining Billy's powers just long enough that I thought for a sec she might kill him. But we all knew that that was never going to happen, and Agatha and Wiccan's preceding fight with death felt like the final battle that everything culminated to, which would have been disappointing if not for the actual finale. But before we get to that, Agatha chooses Billy instead of her, which would be a wild 180 for her usual selfish self, if not for all of the character work done to set up how much she cared for him. Yet, I still didn't believe she was dead until I saw her decomposing and all the grass and fungus growing on her. Though, just after that, I could have gone without the subtitle spoiling that she's a ghost before the camera does. Because this isn't the first time that Marvel's subtitles have spoiled something cool. I'm looking at you, K-E-V-I-N. But then came the finale, which I was so worried about. Marvel has a knack for ending their seasons on a bit of an anticlimax, and some may consider this like that, but to me, this finale was perfect. With the Agatha flashbacks, I would have liked to see her and Death meeting for the first time, but that's not really necessary and could have easily been written badly, so I'm fine with what we got. And the way that Nicholas created the song and the myth of the Witch's Road just added so many unexpected layers to the show as a whole, allowing for the montage of Agatha draining witches throughout history to bring the narrative full circle. And after that amazing sequence is where it's fully revealed that the Agatha we heard at the end of episode 8 is in fact a ghost. And not just that, she's got her gray hair. During those last 15 minutes, I wasn't sure if Billy and Agatha's ghost could wrap everything up climactically, but their conversation was enough for me. Plus, I thought it was a fantastic concept to have Agatha be Billy's ghost buddy, but I figured the show was too mature to do that. Surely it would give Agatha closure with her son, maybe even have a scene with her talking to him. But nah, I kinda love it though. And we got the perfect setup for season 2, so my only question is when is that gonna be? And I mentioned earlier that there was a moment that kinda took me out, and that was when Ryo's death cut through the fake set, which was certainly a choice. It was definitely cool, but it just reminded me that where they were was a set, but that was probably intentional and I'll come back around on it with time. But what are your thoughts on the WandaVision spinoff Agatha all along? Leave a comment with your thoughts and let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for weekly video essays and reviews, and enjoy a delicious sandwich.